Hey everyone, it's Jenny from the WOW Creative team. I hope you're all staying healthy and well. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create two cards which both feature a gorgeous stamp that's WOW embossing designed by our very own Karen from the creative team. It features a gorgeous hand-drawn mandala and I'm going to give you a quick look at the stamp set here. You can see it's also got four uh, individual sentiment stamps, some in block type and some in a gorgeous scripty font which go perfectly with embossing projects. So starting off, we're still on our rainbow kick. So I'm gonna be featuring rainbows two different ways using this stamp set. The first card I'm going to create, I'm going to be heat embossing the mandala in the center of a panel of Bristol Smooth cardstock because I'm going to be doing some ink blending. I love Bristol Smooth for ink blending. And I'm first off going to treat the cardstock with a powder tool just so I don't get any embossing powder sticking where I don't want it. This removes all of the static cling and any inky fingerprints that you might have left on the card. And then I'm using my Misty. I'm going to ink it up in WOW embossing ink, stamp it down, and then I did repeat that one more time just off camera just to make sure I got a good clear impression. I'm going to be embossing this first mandala card with clear gloss embossing powder. This is a clean, clear and shiny embossing powder. There's also a clear matte. Uh, I, you could also use white embossing powder for this first card. I'm looking for something that just keeps things uh, white where the image is. And I'm using Bristol Smooth. It's a very crisp white cardstock. So the clear works great. I had it in super fine as well. This is quite a detailed image, but you could also use regular or whatever you've got on hand. Something that will show up well against a bunch of rainbow ink blending. Now I heat embossed it the first time and I felt like because I was using super fine, I wanted to get a bit more dimension. So I placed the cardstock with the first heat embossed mandala back in my Misty, re-inked up my stamp and then reheat embossed again. And that just adds a little bit more dimension as you build up those layers of embossing powder. I actually did this three times and I'm showing you a close up here. It's, for some reason I couldn't get my camera to quite focus, uh, but you'll see there's quite a bit of dimension there. You can get a similar effect by using a, a, a chunkier powder, maybe ultra high. However, you'll lose some of the detail uh, when you use um, a thicker powder. So I like to do it this way instead. I'm then going to be using Distress Inks and I've sped this up quite a lot. I'm using them with my blending brushes from Tailored Expressions, just because they're so pretty. And I'm using the, an array of Distress Inks in the rainbow colors. I'm using Candied Apple, Carved Pumpkin, Squeezed Lemonade, Twisted Citron, Salty Ocean, Wilted Violet, and picked raspberry, so the pink goes at the bottom. And whilst I have sped this up, just because it's not really an ink blending tutorial, uh, just a couple of quick tips. Use a post-it note to protect the cardstock once you've done a bit of ink blending from your fingertips. And also go back and forth between the two colors just to get a nice blend as you go down the cardstock. Now I'm gonna add some splatters of water and lay it over a paper towel just to lift up that ink once it's had 10 or 20 seconds to sit there. You can do this with all sorts of inks, but really distress inks do this the best. I'm also going to use my paper towel just to wipe off some of that excess ink that is sitting on top of that embossing powder. You'll see that the embossed image has resisted the ink and you can see that mandala stamp perfectly once I wipe off what's sitting on top. And you can't really have a rainbow ink blended card without a bit of sparkle. So I'm going in with some shimmer spritz. This is in sparkle, it's by Sukineko. And I've just uh, shaken it up and then I'm spattering on some drops, not too much, cause it is quite strong and uh, leave that to dry. And you can get a close up look here. You can see that gorgeous dimension because of the three layers of embossing powder I've done. Now for my second card, I'm using WOW embossing cardstock. I've trimmed it down to an A2 size. Again, I did leave that mandala stamp in my Misty just because, you know, I want it in the same place. This time I'm going to be heat embossing in multiple rainbow colors. 
So I'm gonna give you a look at each of the colors I'm using. Most of these are primary embossing powders, so they don't have any shimmer or sparkle in them. There's one difference, the green, that is a metalline because I didn't have any primary based greens in my stash. However, uh, unfortunately their green metalline color I use has been discontinued by WOW. However, there are a couple of others that you can also use and I've linked to those in the supplies list. So for my red, I'm using primary red apple. For my orange, I'm using primary bird of paradise. And you'll see, I'm showing you close up here, just in real time, I'm just gently tipping on the embossing powder and being careful to tip it off the edge of the panel so that it doesn't fully coat all of that embossing powder, uh, embossing ink, because I'm trying to get streaks and strips of that rainbow color. For my yellow, I'm using primary lemon, and you'll see I accidentally went too far down there. So on one side, it kind of covers too much of the image. So I'm just coming in with a blusher brush. You can use any brush, just something dry and clean, just to, to uh, flip off any of the excess powder. This is the green I mentioned, the metalline green gauge. There is an earth tone olive color that WOW carries that is similar. It just doesn't quite have that metalline sheen to it. You could try instead. And I'm again coming in with my blusher brush uh, because I wasn't quite careful enough. For my blue, I'm using Opaque Primary Frozen, which I've had this color for ages. I love it. Isn't it the perfect color of a certain Disney princess's dress? Can't think of which one. And you'll see that these colors blend together because wherever the first powder that you apply hasn't landed, you cover it up a little bit with the second powder and you naturally get them blending together. It's like perfect ink blending but with embossing powders. So after the frozen, I'm coming in with the primary indigo for my purple and then the fuchsia fusion, which is a really nice hot pink color for the last and unfortunately, because I was taking so long to do this, showing it to the camera, etc., there wasn't quite enough ink left sticky at the end. Normally, you wouldn't be filming this, showing it up to the camera, taking your time, like I was, because I was filming this. So I don't think you would have to do the next step that I'm doing here. But if it just so happens that you're slower or you know the ink has dried, you maybe didn't have quite a juicy ink pad, here's a way that you can uh, fix that. So I'm going back in, I'm adding some embossing ink to the bottom of my stamp, which I have left in my Misty in the exact same place that I stamped the image in. So that's a one tip. I've, I've heated up all my embossing powder, so it's, and now it's cooled down. I can go back in, re-ink, and then re-add my powder where I didn't quite get a crisp impression. And as long as you got your stamp and your cardstock lined up, you will get it perfectly aligned and you will basically fill in the rest of that image which is what happened here i did try it first time i didn't quite line up my second stamping and it was a disaster and had to start again so to finish off my cards i'm going to be using the sentiments from the mandala stamp set this first one this is a really pretty scripty sentiment i'm just going to stamp it in obsidian black ink from altenew onto some white cardstock and then trim it out I'm going to be using this one for the uh, rainbow embossed piece. I, I like the contrast of the black with that rainbow. And I have popped up both of my panels onto a white card base, 110 pound Nina Solar white card base using craft foam, just because it, it adds dimension. It also flattens out any little uh, amount of warping that you might have from the uh, heat embossing. Now for my second card, my rainbow ink blended card, I'm going to heat emboss the block thanks from the stamp set in opaque bright white embossing powder onto black cardstock. I trim both of the sentiments out and pop them up on a Doris foam strip and that finishes off both of my cards. I did go back in and add some uh, crystals to that rainbow one. You can see in the close up here where I added them just for a bit of extra sparkle and that finishes my video. I hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to check out the other tutorials over on the WOW channel and have a wonderful day. Bye!